Hi, my name is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. This is video B on the male reproductive system. We will continue to focus on the anatomy. Um, particularly here in this video, we'll focus on the testes and the epididymis. When we slice through the testis, then we see that it's protected by two tunics, two layers essentially. One is called the tunica vaginalis, which is really an extension of the peritoneum. So it's made up of a visceral and a parietal layer, and it's located right here. In addition to that, we have a rather tough leathery capsule that is referred to as the tunica albiginia that sits right here. So it sits deeper to the tunica vaginalis. The tunica albiginia actually creates invaginations that create little compartments we'll refer to as lobules. It's in the walls of the seminiferous tubules that spermatogenesis, meaning the making of the haploid sperm cells, occurs. Now, clearly we're looking at a testicle, meaning a testis with the epididymis here and then the tunics around it. Um, and typically a testicle will drop during the seven months of development, so during the seven months of pregnancy, but not always. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes a boy is born with maybe one of his testicles still within the body and, and they might drop by the, might, it might drop by, the, by itself or sometimes surgical intervention is needed. The testes have three major functions. In the walls of the seminiferous tubules, we see that the sperm cells are formed, but also there we find Sertoli cells, which we'll see on future pictures, um, that produce testicular fluid that helps out with the production of sperm. Now, in between the seminiferous tubules, we see another cell that is referred to the, as the interstitial cell. They sit in between the seminiferous tubules or the cells of Leydig, and they're the ones that produce testosterone. The testosterone will be needed to keep spermatogenesis going. So now a few words about the epididymis. It's really a very, very tightly coiled tube that has a head end right here and a tail end right there. So after the sperm cells have been formed in the walls of the seminiferous tubules, they're going to move up through these various little ducts that will give names in just a little while, and they will eventually make it in the head of the epididymis, and they mature there and mature there and eventually end up in the tail of the epididymis. This is also the time when um, the testicular fluid that was produced by Sertoli cells here to help with spermatogenesis is, reabsor is absorbed. And we're finding that the epididymis is going to help um, nourish the sperm cells and get them ready to swim up the vas deferens if they need to do so uh, during an ejaculation reflex. So during an ejaculation reflex, the sperm cells will actually enter the vas deferens, and then the vas deferens will actually go through peristaltic contractions because its wall is lined, or it, its wall, I should say, has smooth muscle present. So there's a whole series of tiny little ducts that all participate in eventually allowing the sperm cells, the haploid sperm cells, to reach the epididymis. So let's take a closer look at this. So the haploid sperm cells will leave the seminiferous tubules and then end up in these tubules called the straight tubules, or in Latin, the tubuli recti. Recti meaning straight. From there, they then enter into a network of tubules referred to as the reti testes. Think of the term reticular. R-E-T is the prefix for reticular, which always refers to a network. So I'm trying to help you remember the names of these different uh, tubes and ducts here. 
And from there, finally, we make it as sperm cells into the efferent ductules, which then form the very coily, 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 coily epididymis. And you know by now, once the sperm cells reach maturity in the tail end of the epididymis, they enter the vas deferens uh, towards the ejaculatory duct and from there into the urethra. I've pointed out the vas deferens a number of times. We'll do it one more time. So here is the epididymis where the sperm cells mature. Via peristaltic contractions, they will migrate up the vas deferens. Here is the ampulla of the vas deferens, the ejaculatory ducts, and then we enter into the urethra. So because the vas deferens is outside of the body for um, a stretch here, it's possible to either cut it here or somehow obstruct it, putting a loop around it. Or there's various ways of doing it to prevent sperm cells from ever reaching the penis. And of course, that is what we refer to as a vasectomy, which is a very, very efficient and effective uh, method of birth control. We're going to continue looking at the anatomy in the next video uh, with a focus on the different regions of the urethra and the penis itself.